Are we sure 100% that it's Joe Biden? Joe Biden this week announced his candidacy for re-election as president of the United States. Somewhat expected, at least because inertia is the easiest thing to predict. Change, as we all have come to learn, is somewhat unpredictable. The existence of change is predictable, but exactly what that change might be, unpredictable. Joe put out a very Hollywood-produced production video this week. I believe Jeffrey Katzenberg was behind it, where his theme was, it's time to finish the job. What's interesting is there are a lot of indications that the American public does not want Joe Biden to finish the job or does not believe that he can finish the job, President Joe Biden. Poll shows that 70 percent from Gallup, 70 percent of Democratic primary voters do not want a second term for Joe Biden. There's no indication necessarily that they'd leave him behind, that they would choose another candidate, but they'd prefer that they didn't have to pick Joe Biden. I think what underscores that is Robert F. Kennedy Jr. I guess a good word for RFK Jr. would be iconoclastic. Iconoclastic RFK Jr., who's been skeptical of the COVID vaccine, skeptical of all vaccines. I think fair to call an anti-vaxxer, and I don't say that with um, derision. I say that with description. You know, it's interesting. I would love to have a conversation with RFK. I mean, like, is he against, because I don't really know, to be honest. All vaccines, the, I mean, he's right. I think he said when I was a kid, him, he got three vaccines. Now the schedule's up to 72 vaccines. Um, I don't know that we should accept anything after COVID at face value based upon just invocations of the science. But at the same time, RFK, he's drawn, I guess, a line against the Democratic orthodoxy when it comes to trans athletes. He's saying men shouldn't play women's sports. But in the past, he's also said things like, well, I believe climate skeptics should be thrown in jail, like legit, 100% thrown in jail. He's kind of changing that position today. I saw something this weekend that he's pivoting on climate, maybe, that that's become science orthodoxy as well. Maybe the whole COVID experience has made him question, I think righteously, all the invocations of don't question the science. But I don't know. I'm a little skeptical of RFK, and I would love to have a conversation, and I'd love to hear the nuance and the reason for the positional changes. I've had positional changes. I don't begrudge anybody of a change. I, I was skeptical. In fact, not just skeptical. I was opposed to the embrace of populism in like 2011. And now, as you know, I think a healthy dose of populism is exactly what's needed for the nation. So I don't begrudge anybody from a change, but I want to know why. I'll be an open book. Anyone can ask me a question. I'd like to know more about RFK. Junior. But the polling shows Junior. It's pulling about 19, 20% of Democratic primary voters. That's a lot. It's not as though, as I described him as an iconoclast, he's mainstream. And so if you are mainstream Democrat, you might look at this and go, 70% don't want Joe. Almost 20% want RFK Jr. How many would want me? Let's put a pin in that for just one moment. You know, the price to pay of politics and vision is such that we need to have a deeper conversation about illegal immigration. And we will in just one moment. But I think the American public has to be able to see on some issues exactly the price that we are paying. Look, Justice Samuel Alito this week said that he knows, as we approach the one-year anniversary of the Supreme Court leaker, that he knows not with the level of certainty he feels like he could cast a accusation, but he knows with some logical conclusion who the Supreme Court leaker is. And that's significant because one year in, we don't. Alito may know, but we, Americans, don't know who leaked the Supreme Court opinion that overturned Roe v. Wade, Dobbs. Now, look, I just watched the documentary not too long ago on how they caught the Boston bombers. 
It took them about 48 hours. And that was a big technological feat. Thousands and thousands of hours of video surveillance footage. They catch people like, although they didn't know he existed once they found out that he did, the Air National Guardsman, quick. Okay? They catch people fast with a huge pool of suspects. But, like, there's 82. I believe that's the number I read. 82 potential suspects in the Supreme Court leak case, and we haven't caught who did that. And, and don't act like it's no big deal. Like, we did, it's just a noose, as Alito said. This inspired people through their passions to target Supreme Court justices for assassination. I mean, a dude did show up on Brett Kavanaugh's lawn, ready with zip ties and a gun and knives and ready to take out Brett Kavanaugh. Protesters at their homes. Yesterday on Fox and Friend, Shannon Bream told us there's still protest on justices' lawns. It's just not in the media. So there was a price to pay for this leak. And whether or not, you know, is Chief Justice John Roberts and his belief in the sanctity of the court and never air our dirty laundry, keep collegiality, minimum disruption, or whether or not, and I know it never went to the DOJ and the FBI, but whether or not it's those law enforcement agencies under the guidance of the Biden administration on numerous cases from the pipe bomber at the DNC and the RNC on January 6th to this and many others, a set of priorities, the American public has to see not everything right now is above the board. That's exactly what I heard on Fox and Friends this weekend when we had a panel of voters, three self-described Democrats, okay? And of those Democrats, of those three, only one, now this is anecdotal, this is small focus group type stuff, but only one said she would vote for Joe Biden. But she said she would vote for Joe Biden in a general election. She's out too in a primary. The other two Democratic voters that I spoke to, out on Joe Biden in the primary, and out on Joe Biden in a general election. The reasons given were, in one case, the economy, and in another case, what they felt like was unforgivable policies, priorities, positions on school closures, COVID, vaccines in general on COVID, the general approach to this total disruption of our lives, and and the Twitter files, all of this extending into the world of censorship. That's what the three Democrats had to say. You sure it's Joe Biden? And then in perhaps the upset of the weekend, and again, it's anecdotal, it's small focus group type stuff. What they told me when asked, hey, if the general election were Joe Biden versus Donald Trump, Donald Trump, here we are seven years into Donald Trump, right? In my estimation, it would have been that everybody's calcified, solidified, their opinions 100% done. Of course, the Democrat that said she would support a Democrat in the general election wouldn't vote for Donald Trump. The one that said he focused on the economy raised his hand. Biden, no. Trump, hand up. And the one that cared about COVID and those issues, who, for what it's worth, she said, vote Obama, Democrats, immigrate from the Soviet Union. Biden versus Trump, her hand went up ever so slightly that you could only see behind another person's back because she said she still lives on the Upper West Side of New York for Trump. We sure? If your name's Gavin Newsom, are you sure? If you're a mainstream Democrat and you see the success of RFK at 19%, you sure? If you're anybody but Kamala Harris who stands to inherit the throne of a man who would finish that term at 86 years old. If you're any other Democrat, Susan Rice just left the administration. If you're any other Democrat and you see that opportunity, you sure, once again, that it's Joe Biden? Hey, it's Will Kane. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News channel on YouTube. It's the best way to get our latest interviews and highlights. And click to subscribe to the Will Kane podcast for full episodes right now.